frankly, people want to hear the challenges. It's you know they do. What we're doing here is very much like making a film. You know, it's it's like what are the challenges? You know, what did you try and failed at and came back and sprang back into life for and overcame that hurdle to get to what you wanted the most. When did you have the idea that you wanted to be a travel filmmaker? Ah, uh, yeah, travel and filmmaking. It's a combination of things that is eternally exciting. Uh, for some reason, it's been uh, my uh, fascination, dedication, obsession since I was 15. Uh, I first went to Europe with a band uh, when I was in high school uh, for three months, and that got me hooked on travel forever. So when you travel when you're young, especially, it'll stay a part of your life uh, for the entire run of your life. So I, was, I knew that I was wanted to see possibly every country in the world, if I could possibly do it. And then I also fell in love with filmmaking, so I wanted to combine those two, travel and filmmaking. And so, like many filmmakers that were in love with National Geographic shows, the BBC, uh, I would collect all those National Geographics when I was young and uh, dream about going to these places and making films in these uh, great countries around the world. So I started doing that when um, right out of college, really. You know, I was shooting, I got an assignment. Uh, I worked with Runner's World magazine when I was 20, 21, and I convinced them to send me to Europe, you see, for uh, a year on assignment to cover different marathons and running events. And of course, while I was there, I was filming uh, cheese makers of Switzerland, uh, tapestry makers of Spain, you know, just all violin makers in England. So I was interested uh, right away when I was 20 to uh, combine this filmmaking with the international travel life. And I'm not sure where the curiosity comes from because uh, my mother's never been on a plane ever. And my father was uh, travel, but only during World War II. So that's not much in the sense of travel and culture. He was on a ship. But my, uh, my brothers and sister were never that interested at all in travel. So I don't know why people are inspired to do certain things in their life versus their siblings or parents. But for me, it was always just a need to get out there and do uh, National Geographic shows or documentaries. And almost every filmmaker I've ever run into wants to do a feature film at some point, a dramatic film, a movie, you know, it's so romantic to do that in a sense when you're young. So I always wanted to do a feature film when I was very young, but I didn't have the capacity to do it. So I focused on travel adventure shows and documentaries since I was 20, essentially. What type of temperament and mindset does a travel filmmaker have to have? Yeah, a temperament for the ideal travel filmmaker, uh, number one, if you're going to dedicate your life to uh, seeing the world, studying the world, traveling to these places around the planet, it's a lot like a sailor's life. You, you have to be forego a lot of the things that uh, a normal person that with a happy family at home and maybe a house, maybe that's not going to happen for you uh, because it can be incredibly disruptive to have maintain a relationship at home if you're out there you know, in Zanzibar making a documentary or something, what happens to your partner at home? You know, they're, you get together as a couple so that you can literally be together, spend your life together, enjoying things together. But if you're so separate, that can drive a wedge between your relations, uh, relationships. And so it's very hard on families if you are a dedicated gypsy adventurer filmmaker, unless you can somehow devise a way to travel with your... Uh, you know, partner, then that's ideal. Actually, then you take your home with you in that sense. But if you have family, if you have a kid or two kids or something, then that's almost impossible to do that as a filmmaker. So there's going, you have to make a deal with yourself to, uh, to figure out what is the strongest pull, uh, the biggest obsession in your life. If, it's, if your uh, need is to get out there and make films around the world, you have to make peace with that and not complain about that, not whine about it. You just have to go do that and follow your dream. And you just hope that uh, the rest of your life can stay in parallel or synchronize with that 
as you go through your life, sometimes it doesn't work. A lot of filmmakers that uh, travel half the year in different countries of the world, they, it's almost impossible to maintain uh, that relationship at home. So there's a lot of divorces in this case with a lot of uh, people I know. Anyway, sometimes they just stay bachelors for their, all of their lives, you know, if that's what they do. Uh, filmmakers and photographers I know that travel for half the year or more. And, and dealing with peer and, and family judgment, I'm sure, is, is something, you know, if you come back for Thanksgiving and oh, yeah. when are you going to settle down? Marlon? Yeah, that's always a, <laughs> that's always a big uh, challenge, isn't it, when you get together at holidays with your family and each of the siblings and the parents are so different than you are and you're, you're the black sheep of the family and it's, it's so difficult to even find a common ground of things to talk about, topics, you know. And so, yeah, you, you definitely run into some interference at times from, uh, from family members. Uh, but sometimes that's a, a bit of an inspiration. In a way, my uh, father, even though I, I did uh, like him very much, I'm sure I loved him, but it wasn't this hugging kind of relationship. He was, uh, like I said, he didn't understand what I was doing uh, making films. He couldn't get his head wrapped around the concept of why are you making these films? How do you expect to make money? And so we never really got along too well. And so that was always uh, a bit of friction. We just never had anything in common. But I looked at his life though as not a life necessarily well spent because um, I think he just get, got caught up in in raising a family with four kids and, and he was an air traffic controller. He didn't have any particular passion with that job. And he would work odd shifts, night shifts, graveyard shifts. So, and then he got let go because of cataracts. And, and so I saw him as a very unsatisfied uh, man in later life. And I just, as a reverse model, I thought that was probably good for me to see that in the sense of I don't want to become the person just in the rock, rocking chair watching television when you're 50 or 60 all of your life. Way too young. Yeah, it does. It was very unfortunate to see that. But, yeah. um, but again, you know, just like any artist, filmmakers, uh, if you're obsessed with it, if it's something that you have to do, that's what artists do. They, they will paint, they will write, they will uh, do theater, they'll do dancing. Even if there isn't uh, an immediate audience or immediate money for it, you are compelled to do it, and that's the same thing with a filmmaker. You better feel compelled and driven to do it, otherwise you better get out, and get out now, and choose another career, because there's too many obstacles uh, to be successful uh, for a life of filmmaking, uh, money-making, filmmaking. There's too many obstacles. If you're not obsessed and strong and uh, have those blinders on, that's the only way a film will get done is if you, or if your small little team are so driven to do it, it will fail if you do not um, keep your vision strong and clear. It will fail, there's no question. And uh, especially if you're doing something you think is very, very good, you know, just two minutes, go ahead. And also things will fail and you have to maybe try again with something brand new. Yeah, that's true, yeah. And that's again, uh, the sense of if you, are too focused on just one film, one topic, one project, if you're too focused and too obsessed with it, it uh, let's hope it works out for you. Uh, if it doesn't, for some reason, uh, it can <laughs> kind of destroy your life or you'll give up. So that's why, I, you know, again, it's, it's wise to have a, a healthy uh, set of other options for stories available and nearly ready to go if that one project that is your, you think is your magnum opus, your masterpiece, if you're not able to do it this year, maybe you take that second project and do it. You know, it's, if it's a little bit easier to accomplish, to assemble the team to do that second movie instead of that masterpiece you wanted to do, uh, don't worry about it. Just, just go ahead and pivot. Pivot to these other projects and don't, um, you know, just don't say this is the only thing or nothing. That's not really a good way to go. It's not healthy at all to, to have that plan, so.